So in the sequence of chapter, let me just revise this once again. So you get an idea what we are dealing with. We start with the first chapter of chemistry that tells you about the terms, right? And the units, right? We get some definitions of different terms and units that we are going to study and we get what we are going to study. That means we are going to study the substance, the matter. We are going to study matter, the answer of what was matter. And in terms of matter, we will deal with both the things. We'll deal with like what is matter made up of and then as a whole, how matter behaves. Okay, so both the picture, microscopic picture and the macroscopic picture of matter, we are going to look in this subject of science that is chemistry. How we are going to do that? How we are going to do that? We are going to measure things. So what we are measuring? We are measuring matter. But what do our, what properties are we measuring for the matter? So we said that we will be measuring, mainly we deal with the number of moles, the number of moles and then per liter, per kg, okay, mole fraction. These are different, different things that we need to measure and quantify in terms of, in terms of matter. Next is uh, we also did what type of grammar we are using. So chemical reactions is something that chemistry use as is, as the grammar of change. Okay. So this is the like sentences in chemistry and these elements, these are words for each chemical reactions. So we understood these parts, like the basics of what we are going to deal with in the first chapter. In the second chapter, we dig into the microscopic pictures that actually matter is weight of what? So we said neutrons, protons, and electrons. Neutrons and protons, they are at in the nucleus. And electrons, depending on how many neutrons are there, they will be having elements, they will be having same number of electrons and electrons will be situated in different shells. And then we studied the electronic structure, electronic structure. After that, in the next chapter, on the basis of the atomic number and how the electrons are distributed in different shells and subshells, we divided and we made a table that is periodic table consisting of S block, B block, E block, and F block. Okay, and then also depending on the electron that is present in the valence shell, we talked about its valency that is responsible for its that is responsible for its reactivity because the outermost electron they are going to react with different things. So we understood the basis of what are things made up of and why does changes happen. And then we started different like we started with small things. For example, if I have calcium and nitrogen, calcium has two valence electron, nitrogen has three valence electrons, so they will make a compound which is calcium nitrate, which has a formula Ca2N3. Now we wanted to look at this molecule. We wanted to look at this molecule, what is making the calcium and nitrogen bind together. So we went to the next chapter after periodic properties, that is the chapter four, which is structure, right? Molecular structure and shape, shape of molecules, right? Chemical bonding and molecular structure. So in that we talked about the bonds between two different elements or two same elements. We talked about mostly about bonds. Now, when we have different bonds, then they will lead to a particular structure. They will be leading to a particular structure. So we also understood about this particular structure. In bonding, we study two theories, valence bond theory and the molecular orbital theory. So they explain the bonding in different, different terms and molecular orbital theory, which is new and it is based on the modern science and it is more applicable and it is completely applicable in all of the things. Valence bond theory has some limitations and that is why the MOT was given. Fine. So we understood about molecules also. Next, we said that, okay, fine, but we never deal with one molecule or two molecules. So what is the behavior of molecule in bulk? What is the behavior of molecule in bulk? So we have water, let us say, so we can have water in the gas form also, water in the liquid form also, and water in the solid form also. Now, are they same or are they different? Is there any different behavior? Is there any different behavior between the water molecules, even though the constituent elements that is H2O is same in gas, liquid and solid, but still they are behaving differently. That means the substances that we are dealing with in our real life, they don't only matter. It is like the main property that we thought was the constituent elements that were making the, making the substance, but the phase of substance, whether it is gases, liquid or solid, it is also going to matter. So we learned mainly about gases, solid and liquid will be mainly learning in the 12th standard. And we said that there are four things, pressure, volume, number of moles and temperature would determine the state of a gas. And if I have these four terms, if I have the values of these four things, then I will be able to tell what, uh, I mean, whether like we can define the complete gases system. Now, after that, we talked about thermodynamics. Why did thermodynamics came up? Because we start with an object 
and in chemistry we also study the change we not only study the matter but we also study the change so thermodynamics and thermodynamics we talked about many processes so mainly we talked about process now after process after a process happens we will get a state we will get a state and this is known as the equilibrium state that means what happens after a long time equilibrium what does it do it tells me what happens what happens after a long time and this word long it is a relative because if i talk about what happens after a long time uh, let us say a cup of coffee so if i for that long means 10 minutes 20 minutes if i just keep it away like not in the presence of any heat then it will become cold so 10 to 15 minutes is long for a cup of coffee or cup of tea but if i talk about human then long means around 80 years or 100 years right so this long it has a relative definitions but we will be dealing with we are, we are certainly not dealing with time okay so we will never answer how much time a particular reaction is going to take in this equilibrium chapter and we said the same thing in the thermodynamics also we are more interested in like if i just leave it if i just leave it then at the end what i will be getting what will i be getting at the end so equilibrium is going to talk about that equilibrium is going to talk about what is going to happen after a very long time now in the sequence of chapter i hope the place of equilibrium is clear to all of you yes or no Yes. Yes or no, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, equilibrium. So whenever see, equilibrium is talking about what will happen after a process has happened. That means a change has happened. A change is happening, and what is going to be the end product after a very long time. So whenever we talk about change, I hope you remember that we can classify the change in two types, and similarly we can classify equilibrium in two types. physical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium chemical equilibrium now in physical equilibrium we will be talking about <clears throat> liquid vapor equilibrium if we have liquid and vapor no so the equilibrium that exists between liquid and vapor phase we'll be talking about solid and liquid equilibrium we'll be also talking about solute that is solid and the solute that is present in aqueous medium so i have written aqueous but you can understand that it is in the solution okay so it's solute that is solid that we have added and these are the three type of physical equilibrium that we will be studying so liquid vapor and solid liquid i don't need to explain but if i want to explain the solute and uh, solute solid and solute aqueous then we have water okay this is very little water let us say 10 ml and you dropped in 100 grams of salt then obviously 100 grams of salt will not be completely dissolved in 10 ml of water there will be some lumps of there will be some lumps of salt that will be present there will be some lumps of salt that will be present here now it does not mean that it does not mean that dissolution is not taking place it doesn't mean that dissolution is not taking place what is happening in this solution we have two things we have nacl that is in solid state we also have any plus ions we also have cl negative ions and all of these are composed in water all of these are composed in water so nacl is solid what we can see here that is not getting dissolved and there are some na plus and cl negative so you will have a two things would be happening sodium and chlorine sodium and chloride will be joining together and it will be making nacl solid because they can join together but if i add sod sodium chloride in water then sodium chloride also has a property to dissociate itself so these are the two we can say reaction but it is mainly ionization of sodium chloride that is happening place now both of these things will be happening if i add a solute if i add a solute in the water solution sodium chloride and sodium 
sodium ion and chloride ion they can combine and form NaCl and NaCl some of the NaCl it does not mean that we have only one no? we have if I take one mole that is 10 to the power 23 so approximately million 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 of NaCl molecules will be there some of the million NaCl molecules they will be dissociating some of the million sodium positive and chloride ions they will be associating and they will be forming NaCl now, both of these things would be happening and that is why we say that we have established a equilibrium we have established a equilibrium Khair. Talk about this later, but let us start with a simple liquid vapor equilibrium. First of all, okay, let us understand the liquid vapor equilibrium. And I want all of you to answer the questions. Okay, answer the question. We have a we have a box, and <clears throat> let us say that it is completely. Like it, it does not have any particle inside it. Okay. So it is completely vacuum. And I fill it with water. I fill this with water. Just lower the volume. Now, so as soon as I fill this up with water, evaporation will take this because evaporation is going to take this because water molecules, they don't want to be condensed in a very concentrated form. They will go up. Some of the water molecules, they will break and they will form water vapor. So no, I hope you have seen when you keep a utensil like this, there's a utensil and you cover it, then in the morning you will see some water droplets on the lid. Yes or no, guys? You have seen this? Yes, sir. Hmm. So that those water droplets are uh, how did they come? Because water it evaporated and it stuck on the vessel. It stuck on the vessel. Now, so initially, let me just let me make it So I can say initially. There was no water vapor because as soon as I poured down the water at that time, there was no water vapor. Yes or no, guys? Correct? All of you agree? Yes. Okay. Now, slowly, in the change, what is happening? The concentration of water vapor increases. Yes or no? Correct? There will be water vapor forming slowly. Yes or no, guys? Yes. Yes. What about others? Khalil, Mazia, Minashi, Razan, Yusra? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Thank you very much. Now, vapor is a gas, yes or no? Vapor is a gas? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. So it will apply some pressure. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Yes, it will apply some pressure. That pressure is known as the pressure applied by the vapor formed by the liquid is known as vapor pressure. Correct? Any problem till here? According to by vapor pressure, any problem? No? Yes, sir. No, no problem. Okay. Now, so what we can do, we cannot say when the water is forming, but what I can do, I can keep a manometer here. I can keep a device which will measure the pressure. And initially we will see the vapor pressure. It is equal to zero when we just added the water and slowly we will see an increase in vapor pressure. Yes or no? As the water gets evaporated and as the water is evaporating, the vapor, water vapor, the water vapor is going to increase. And if there is an increase in the number of moles of water vapor, then we are going to have a higher and higher. There will be an increase in the vapor pressure. Any problem till here? Any problem? No, sir. Okay. Okay. So one thing 
one more thing is that when you talk about this process of evaporation, there is also one more process which will be happening. Some of these water vapors, now some of these water vapors, because this is gas, now this is gas, and they will be having high velocity. They will be having high velocity, and they are moving very rapidly. And when they are moving very rapidly, they will be striking the walls of the container. By that striking of wall, we are creating a pressure. We are creating a pressure, and sometimes they will be also striking the liquid water. Yes or no? Correct. They will be also striking the liquid water. Sometimes. Yes, sir. Now, when they when they when they strike the liquid water, they are they are absorbed by the liquid water. And what happens? So there are two things that is happening. We have H two O that is liquid, and it converts into H two O gas due to evaporation. But there are some water molecules which are in gaseous state, and they also convert to water liquid. At the same time, so these are the two reactions. These are the two transformation, two conversions that is happening while I place water, liquid water, in a container. Yes or no? Any problem till here? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Now, this is what evaporation. This is condensation. Now we are talking about the rate of evaporation. Now we will talk about the rate of evaporation and rate of condensation. So initially, when I just added the water, when I just added the water, there was there were no gas. There were no gas. So I would say that the condensation was zero. There was no condensation happening, but there was liquid water present. Equilibrium, Sayed Muhammad. Okay, sir. Okay, you are learning about the physical equilibrium right now. Water vapor and Uh, liquid water. So when I start, when I just added the water, there was no water vapor. Slowly evaporation happened, and we got some water molecules in the gaseous form. So initially, I would say that the rate of evaporation was greater than rate of condensation. Yes or no? Correct, guys. Yes or no? Tell me. Yes. Yes. Yes, no problem till here. So rate of evaporation was initially rate of is greater than rate of condensation, and it the evaporation will be happening. So what we will be seeing, we will be seeing that the vapor pressure is going on increasing, right? Because if there is more and more evaporation, more and more gas molecules are formed. Now initially, some of the gas molecules will also be converting to liquid, but those number of molecules will be very less. But those number of molecules will be very less. So we will be having more gaseous water molecules because evaporation is happening. if we will be having evaporation that is happening in a more rapid manner so we will see a increase in the vapor pressure we will see a increase in the vapor pressure but after a while after a while what i saw that the vapor pressure the vapor pressure stopped increasing and it achieved a value it achieved a constant value it achieved a constant value so there can be two things that can be said two things can be said if there is some what there is some vapor pressure there is some value it is not zero it is not zero there is some value of the vapor pressure but the value is now not changing the value is not changing what does that mean what does that mean does it mean that the water h2o liquid it stopped converting into h2o gas and what does it mean water gas it stopped converting into water liquid does it mean that these two reaction these two conversions it stopped what do you think guys acha let me so you understood the question or you did not understood the question i think not you did not understand the question you understood this point vapor pressure stopped increasing and it achieved a constant value all of you tell me please yes or no yes sir 
Yusra Khalil yes, Abdurrahman. Yes, sir. Nazia. Yes, sir. Yes, all of you understood that. Okay. Yes. Now, if it achieved a constant value, that means the concentration of H2O gas is constant. It is not increasing anymore. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. It is constant. So, if it is constant, that means you will say that this reaction, if this reaction is going to happen, if this reaction proceeds, if this reaction is going to happen, then that will lead to increase in the concentration of H2O gas, increase in the vapor concentration, yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. yes sir. Okay. So, some may say, now, initially, it would it would look like it would look like that this reaction stopped and we are not the evaporation stopped. It may look like this that evaporation stopped. Okay, yes or no? It may look like the evaporation stopped. Yes or no, guys? Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. But now you tell me, are there gases molecule water vapor is present? Yes or no? Water vapor is present. But we are not having any new water molecule that is getting converted to water vapor. No new water vapor is formed. What we have just now said, like we are understanding. This is not a conclusion. Please remember that we are still understanding. Okay, We are still understanding that the constant value of vapor pressure says that the concentration of water vapor is constant. And if to get the constant water vapor concentration, I will have to stop the formation of new water vapor. I will have to stop the formation of new water vapor. Now we are implying these things. Now I ask another question. I ask another question to myself. There are still water vapor in the container and they are still gas. Yes or no? We still have water vapor in the form of gas, correct? Yes, sir. But those water vapor, will they stop attacking? Will they stop striking the water liquid? Will this thing stop? Striking off. Will this thing stop? No. No. That means this is still happening. Condensation is still happening. Correct? Yes. yes. Now, if condensation is still happening, that will lead to a decrease in the concentration of water gas. Yes or no? Because here we are converting gas to liquid. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But is the concentration decreasing according to the vapor pressure? Is the concentration of water vapor decreasing? No, sir. No. No, it is not decreasing. And it is not decreasing. It says that. Now it means it means that both of these reactions are still happening. H2O liquid is still getting converted to H2O gas, and the H2O gas is still converting to H2O liquid, which is balancing out, which is balancing out. And the rate of these two things, the rate of evaporation and the rate of condensation is equal. That is why we have a constant value of the vapor pressure. We have a constant value of a vapor pressure. Now, just to give you an analogy, there are 1000% here. Okay, this is a swimming pool. There are 1000% out of the swimming pool. 1000% out of the swimming pool. And one person went to the swimming pool. He's not inside the swimming pool, but in the area, he observed what was happening. And he said that, he said that at a particular time, there were 5% in the swimming pool. What did he say? At a particular time, there were 5% in the swimming pool. Does that mean this, those 5% were the only person who swam or there was exchange? What do you think guys? There was exchange, right? Yes, sir. Yes. 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 And in the exchange, the number of people coming in was equal to the number of people going out. And that is why the number of person inside, the number of person inside the swimming pool was constant to 5%. The same thing is happening here. The number of water molecules, the number of water molecule in gas and liquid, it is constant. As in swimming pool and outside the swimming pool, the number of water molecules inside gas and in the liquid phase are same, but there is an exchange happening. There is an exchange happening and the rate of that exchange is constant. The rate of that exchange is constant. So in this case, what is constant? The rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation and which can be seen by a constant value of vapor pressure by a 
constant value of vapor pressure. So I hope this is clear with everyone that in liquid vapor equilibrium, what is constant? We have something that is known as vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is constant. If I talk about solid liquid, then in, in that you will get the melting point is going to be constant. Here the concentration is going to be constant in solute and in the solid state and the aqueous state and the solution state. Okay. Now let us talk about the same thing, liquid vapor. Okay, liquid vapor. Now see, we have just observed one thing. Now we are going to change a few things. Okay, now we are going to change a few things, and this is more interesting. This is more interesting that we change a few things. Now, this is our initial condition. Okay, this is our initial condition, and then we are changing something. So, initially, we will have water, and there will be water vapor. There will be water vapor. Okay. So, what change we did? We increase the volume. Okay, we increase the volume. So in this case, we have a vapor pressure. We have a vapor pressure, okay? There is a vapor pressure. And then we increase the volume of the container, increase the volume of the container. Now you guys tell me, the water which is in liquid form, please listen to this very carefully. The water which is in liquid form, will it see any change in its volume? Will the water in liquid form, will it see any change in its volume? Not much. Sir. Not much. Okay. What about others? The liquid water. Will the volume of liquid water change? No. No, no. Certainly not. Right. But what about the vapor? the gas, if I increase the volume of the container, then what about the gas? It will experience, that will right? That will change, right? So it yes. has yes. a larger volume. It has a larger volume to roam around. It has a larger volume to roam around. Now you can see what is going to happen. Now you can see what is going to happen. So initially we had this equilibrium of liquid to gas and this liquid to gas and gas to liquid. So gas was gas to liquid was only happening because water molecules were striking the gas, the water molecules, which is gases form. The vapor was striking the water, vapor was striking the liquid, and it was converting into liquid form. But in this case, when, when, I, in, when I increase the number, when I increase the volume, when I increase the volume, the number of water molecules striking, the number of water molecules striking the liquid will increase or decrease. What are the chances of striking now? The chances of striking the liquid water increases or decreases if I increase the volume? Decreases. What do you think? Decreases, right? All of you agree? I hope everyone yes, has yes, a little yes, like it will decrease because when I increase the volume, then the water molecules it is going everywhere else. Now it has a slightly less chance of striking the liquid water. It has less, slightly less chance of striking the liquid water and hence I can say while I'm increasing the volume while I'm increasing the volume so what is the change that is happening in terms of the water vapor in terms of this conversion is that in this case the rate of condensation 
rate of condensation decreases because gas is someone who knows what is happening with the volume. Gas is something that is that knows what is happening with the volume. That is why the condensation. That means gas is not going towards liquid, but liquid does not know the liquid. It doesn't know what is happening with the volume. So what is going to happen is the rate of evaporation is same. Okay, so rate of condensation decreases. That means that means we had these two conversions, liquid to gas, and then we had gas to liquid. The this decreased, and this is same. That means we will be forming more and more gases. Yes or no? Tell me. Yes. If the if the condensation decreased, that means, for example, I started with hundred. Water converting to gas and hundred gas converting to water, hundred vapor converting to gas and hundred gas converting to vapor. Now we have only fifty gaseous molecule that is converting to liquid. So obviously we will be have we will be seeing a increase in the concentration of water vapor. Correct? Yes or no? Yes or no, guys? Tell me. Any doubt till here? Yusra, Razan, Khali, no, Muna, no, no. Okay, so since the rate of condensation decreased, so we'll have less and less gas molecules converting into liquid. Rate of evaporation is same, and hence the concentration of gas will increase. Concentration of gas will increase. Okay, this is something that I talked about in terms of in terms of like what is going to happen. But what is the change we can see? This is all inferred information. Information and we are thinking about. It. We can't see any measurable change right now, but we can see a measurable change if I monitor the vapor pressure. If I monitor the vapor pressure, okay. So if I am monitoring the vapor pressure, so I can make a graph like this. I can make a plot. Okay, I can make a plot, and this is my starting point of water vapor. This is my starting point, and this is the vapor pressure initially. This is the vapor pressure initially. Okay, now. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening, and then we suddenly increase the volume. What is the relationship between pressure and volume? If the volume increases, if the volume increases, pressure decreases. Decreases. So vapor pressure will decrease. Yes or no? Correct. Yes. But slowly, we also see that the concentration of gas, number of moles of gas, is increasing. Yes or no? Correct. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Now that will lead to an increase in vapor pressure because number, if number of moles of gases increases, the pressure also increases. So again, there will be an increase in the number of moles of gases, which will lead to increase in vapor pressure, and again it will achieve the same constant value, and then we will be achieving the equilibrium. This will be the equilibrium. So this, I can divide this into three things. Initial. This is all change. So the change happening, and after a very long time, I will be achieving equilibrium. Okay. So please tell me any problem till here. So why are the number of moles increasing? Sorry. So why are the number of moles increasing? why are the number of moles of okay. so you understand that the rate of condensation is decreasing mohammed yes sir okay so initially we had this was initial 100 liquid was converting to 100 gas and 100 of gas was converting to Hundred of liquid, okay. But after the change, we had hundred liquid. This is same converting to hundred gas. But now only fifty of the gas they are striking the liquid and they are converting to fifty liquid. So what do you think? Will the number of gas increase? Yes or no? Think about it and tell me. Hmm. 
Yes, Mohammed. Hmm. Seems you are thinking or you are just silent. Sayyid Muhammad, are you there? I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me, sir? Sorry? Can you hear yeah, me? I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, it will uh, decrease. What will decrease? Uh, the number of moles. Number of moles of what? Gas or liquid? Gas. Gas will decrease. Initially, 100 gas molecules were converting. Now only 50 is converting. Keep your mic on. Yes, sir. Hmm. Initially, how much was changing to liquid? Hmm. Initially. I can't hear you. Yes, Sayyid Muhammad. I can't, I still can't hear you. Okay, Sayyid Muhammad, I, I really can't hear you. Okay, maybe we can discuss this after a while. Okay, what about others? All of you understood this, yes or no? Yes, Razan, Mazia, Minashi, Khalil. Yes. Yes? yes. yes? yes okay. Yes, now, please yes, remember sir. these terms, initial change and equilibrium. This will be a constant theme in the whole chapter of equilibrium. We'll be talking about the initial conditions. We, there will be some change that is happening and then we will be describing the equilibrium, concentration or equilibrium, the state of equilibrium, okay, the state of equilibrium. Now, next I will uh, talk about, next I will talk about the, okay, I've got a chat. I can't hear you, Mohammed. I can't hear you, your mic is even not connected. I, I don't know whether you can hear me or not. Okay. So next, uh, we are talking about the, in this case, we're talking about the solute that is solid and it is an equilibrium with the solute particles that is inside the solution, that is inside the solution. So I have some water molecules here. And then I'm adding some solute, let us say sugar. Some solute, let's, let's say that is sugar. So how does the dissolution happens when we add sugar? So when we add sugar, so let us say that this is a block of sugar. And it is surrounded by water molecules. It is surrounded by water molecules. So what happens? The water molecule, it breaks the sugar down. The water molecule comes mm -hmm. and it breaks the sugar down and sugar is then dissolved in water. Sugar is then dissolved in water. And also there is one more process that is happening. So as I took the example of salt now, so in salt, what can also happen? Two things are that are happening is you have Na plus and Cl negative that is present. It can also associate and it can form sodium chloride. So now it is forming salt and there is another process that is happening, sodium chloride. Then when it is added in water, it can, the water will dissociate the sodium plus and chlorine negative ions, the chlorine negative ions. So these are the two 
changes that is occurring. These are the two changes occurring. And hence we can write NaCl in equilibrium with Na plus and Cl negative. And these are in aqueous state. And this is in solid state. So we have solute that is NaCl and the solute sodium and chlorine negative in the aqueous solution. In the aqueous solution. Now in this, if I associate Na plus and Cl negative, so I am forming solid. This is known as this is known as crystallization. We are forming the we are forming the crystal of NaCl. So this is crystallization reaction. Crystallization. This change is known as crystallization. And here we are converting sodium chloride and we are solving it, dissolving it in the water molecules. This is known as dissolution. Dissolution. So at equilibrium, what happens? At equilibrium, the rate of the rate of dissolution becomes equal to the rate of crystallization. Rate of crystallization. And due to that, what happens? And due to this, when the rate of dissolution and rate of crystallization, they become equal, the concentration of solute in solvent or in the solution becomes constant, becomes constant. So this is something which is equal and there is something which becomes constant. So you will always be having these two things also, the same thing you will be looking in each and every equilibrium state. There will be something which is equal. There are two things that will be equal and there will be one thing which is going to be constant, which is going to be constant. Now, physical equilibrium is not the major part. Physical equilibrium is not the major part. Our major concern in this chapter will be chemical equilibrium and the expansion of chemical equilibrium and also the ionic equilibrium. Okay, We will extend the chemical equilibrium towards the equilibrium of ions also. So this is our main concern and let us dive right into the chemical equilibrium. Right Now, Whenever we have chemical equilibrium, when we talked about H2O, that is in gas, and it is interchanging to H2O liquid. So it meant that it is happening only because the gaseous molecules, they are striking the liquid, and the liquid, it has a tendency to evaporate due to entropy. It has the tendency to evaporate due to entropy. And when we are talking about reactions, when we are talking about reactions, that means if I say A plus B is going to give me C, and there is an equilibrium between these two. That means both of these reactions should happen. Both of these reactions should happen that A to B, if I combine A to B, it should give me C plus D. And if I combine, if I combine C and D, it should give me A and B also. It should give me A and B also. So these type of reactions in which we can, uh, in these type of reactions in which the products that are formed and uh, these products which are formed, they can also react together to form the reactant, to form the reactant. So these type of reactions, these are known as reversible, reversible reaction. So now equilibrium, all of the reaction that we are going to study, all the reaction in universe, they are reversible in a given, in some conditions, in some conditions. Okay. You must have heard there are reversible reaction and irreversible reaction. For example, combustion, it is going to be irreversible. But if I give some certain, and now it is going to be completely imaginary. I'm not saying it is practical, but in theory, each and every reaction is reversible reaction at a particular condition, at a particular condition in theoretical terms. Now, whether we can achieve that theoretical level, that is a matter of debate. That is a matter of how things work in this universe. But theoretically, each and every reaction is reversible, but we will be looking at those reactions. You know, we are not limiting ourselves to theory. We are looking with the practical sense and we will say that we will be only talking about the reversible reaction in terms of what we see in the universe right now, in the terms of what we can do, what reversible reactions we can achieve. We will be talking about those reversible reactions, those reversible reactions. So first of all, let us write the definition of reversible reaction. So what is reversible reaction? reversible reaction. So, as I said, 
the reactions in which the reaction in which products that are formed can also react with each other to form the reactants under suitable condition. Under suitable conditions. Some examples of these type of reversible reactions are hydrogen plus iodine. It is going to give me two moles of H I. Next, if I have N2 plus 3H2 to form ammonia, then ammonia can also dissociate. NH3 can also dissociate to form. N2 and H2. Similarly, if I want to form nitrogen oxide, NO, nitrous oxide, N2 plus O2 will be in equilibrium with NO. Okay. Similarly, NO2, nitrogen dioxide, can dissociate, sorry, it can associate to form N2O4 dimer and the dimer can dissociate to form two moles of NO2, two moles of NO2. So these are the examples. This is the type of reaction that we will be looking at. We'll be looking at. Okay. Now, Next is how is the equilibrium attained here? How is the equilibrium attained here? How is the equilibrium attained here? So next is attainment of equilibrium. We saw the attainment of equilibrium in uh, when we started with vapor and liquid equilibrium. In this case, we will be looking at these products and reactant equilibria. Huh? Equilibria that is attained in terms of products and reactant. Attainment of equilibrium. Attainment of equilibrium. So I have A that represents our reactant and B that represents our product. So when A converts to product, A converts to B, we call this reaction as forward reaction. And this reaction of B to A, we call this as backward reaction. This is forward and this is backward. This is backward reaction. Okay. So, when I talk about forward reaction and backward reaction, what is going to happen? No. We have to understand that A has the ability to form B. And if I have start with B, then B also has the ability to form A. Okay, so both of these reactions are possible. If I have A, then A is going to give me B. If I have B, then B is going to give me A. Both of these things, is, these things are possible. This is something that you have to keep in mind whenever we are dealing with the reversible reaction and whenever we are going to achieve an equilibrium, in that case, both of the reactions are possible. Both of the reactions are possible. Now, let us start with, start with, start with only A. I'm starting with only A. Okay, I'm starting with only A. Now, if I have only A, that means only this reaction is possible. Yes or no, guys? The first reaction, A to B. Yes, sir. Because there is no B. So when I start with A, then I can say that this reaction A to B, there is some rate of that reaction. That is, a, I will call as rate of forward reaction. And this I will call as the rate of backward reaction. So I will say that initially, initially, the rate of forward reaction is greater than the rate of backward reaction because we don't have any B. We don't have any B. But slowly, what is going to happen? Slowly, what is going to happen? there will be an increase in the concentration of B. And if there is an increase in concentration of B, 
then the second reaction will also be possible yes or no the second reaction will also be possible that b can also get converted to a because we have some b now yes sir Yes, yes now because A is going to give me B and as soon as B is formed, some of the B will be converting to A. So what is going to happen slowly? The RB will increase. And RB will increase. Now, if RB is going to increase, there will be a time in which the rate of forward reaction will be equal to the rate of backward reaction. Yes or no, guys? Tell me. Yes, sir. Tell me. Any problem? No, sir. No, no, no. All of you understood this? Yes, sir. After a very long time, that is going to happen. After a very long time, that is going to happen. Okay. After a very long time, rate of forward will be equal to rate of backward. I hope everything is clear till here. Now, after this has happened, after this has happened, we will have some concentration of A, we'll have some concentration of B, right? And the concentration of A and B, they will achieve a value which will be constant. I'm not saying that they both will be equal. No, it doesn't mean that they will be equal, but the concentration of A, if it is five molar and the concentration of B that we have achieved at the rate of forward and is equal to rate of backward, that is equal to two molar, then it is not going to change from that. It is not going to change from that position, that five molar and two molar. It is going to be that same concentration. We understood about this. The concentration will be constant. Yes or no, tell me. Yes. Achha. Yes. Now, okay, fine. Now, I, I think there will be some, there will be some who will have this doubt if the RB is increasing, if the RB is increasing, that means the rate of backward reaction is increasing, then will there be any case in which the rate of forward reaction will be slower than the rate of rate of backward reaction increase so much so that it is also now greater than the rate of forward reaction. How many of you have this doubt in your head that this can also happen? If I start with A, if I start with A, then it can also happen that rate of forward will be slower than rate of backward. How many of you have this thought? Please tell me. No one. Okay, fine, great. So we are ending at this point that attainment of equilibrium, what is going to happen? At equilibrium, what is going to happen? So let me just pull down. And let me conclude this point that at equilibrium, at equilibrium, the rate of forward reaction is equal to rate of backward reaction. rate of backward reaction and the concentration of reactant and product reactant and product becomes constant. Please note that it doesn't mean concentration of reactant is equal to concentration of product. Okay, please remember that. It does not mean that if I achieves a constant value, then it does not mean react necessarily. And it can be a case, a separate case, like it is not the general case, okay? There can be a reaction in which the rate of, in which the concentration of reactant is equal to concentration of product at equilibrium, but it is not always the case. Okay, it is not always the case. We, what we say at equilibrium, the concentration of reactant and product becomes constant. Concentration of reactant and con reactant and product is constant. So you can get a question like this. Mm. Choose the choose the correct option. Okay, choose the correct option. 
at equilibrium the rate of forward is equal to rate of backward or uh, the concentration of a sorry concentration of reactant is equal to concentration of product c Mm. Then you have concentration of reactant and product is constant. D is all of these. Okay, so please remember that it is not correct. All of these is not correct. If you have an option in which you have A, option A and E, option A and C are correct. You will take this option that A and C are correct. Okay, so please remember that this is not a this is not a condition. This is not a condition for equilibrium. This is not a condition for equilibrium. Okay, please remember that. This is also all of this is not a right answer. Okay, so we have the correct option is A and C. That rate of forward is equal to rate of backward, and the concentration of reactant and product is constant. Okay, so these two are clearly remember that reactants and product are not equal at equilibrium. Are not equal at equilibrium. Now I will represent the same things graphically. I will represent the same things graphically. Okay. So here we have this is time, but we are not measuring time. Okay. So time it will we are not going to measure time, but as the time passes, what is going to happen? As the time passes. And here we are talking about the rates. Okay, here we are talking about the rate. So we have a reaction in which we have A that is converting to B. And B is getting converted to A. B is getting converted to A. Now, initially, when we only have A, we will have some rate of forward reaction, yes or no? Correct. There will be some rate of forward reaction. Yes, sir. Yes. And there will now the rate of backward reaction will be zero because B there is no B. Correct? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, as the time passes, more and more B will be produced, and the rate of the rate of backward reaction will increase, and slowly it will be constant. And here, as the concentration of A is decreasing because A is getting converted to B. The rate of forward reaction will decrease slowly. There will be a time in which both of them will become equal. Okay, so this is the rate of forward, and this is the rate of backward. They will become equilibrium, and we will say that this is the equilibrium state. This is the equilibrium state in which the rate of forward reaction is equal to rate of backward reaction. We are more interested in this. Rate of uh, reaction forward and backward are equal, rather than the time in which the equilibrium has been achieved. Okay, so we are not interested in time. I am saying this once more time. I am इसको दस बार बोलेंगे, सौ बार बोलेंगे. That we are not interested in time. So never get this like time का तो कुछ आना ही नहीं चाहिए आपके दिमाग में. Whenever you are dealing with any questions of equilibrium, okay. Whenever you are dealing with any question of equilibrium, there will be no notion of time. We are not having time as a constraint. Next is. let us talk about the concentration so this is the rate of forward and rate of backward now about the concentration similarly here also the concentration of there will be some concentration of a initially but the concentration of b will be zero okay this axis represents time but we are not quantifying it this axis y axis represents the concentration now slowly the concentration of a will decrease and the concentration of b will increase you know so you can see that the concentration they are different the concentration they are different and please remember that this point na intersection hai iska matlab ye nahi ki kuch na kuch matlab hoga is point ka this point has no meaning at equilibrium so at equilibrium what is the our condition that the concentration of the reactant it has become a constant and we have also got the concentration of product which is a constant so i will say that this is the Here is the equilibrium state. This is the state of equilibrium. These are the all the 
state of changes okay whenever we are having increase and decrease but as soon as the concentration they become constant you can see that the concentration of b is now constant itna concentration hai itna hi hai this concentration of a this is also constant has achieved this value and it is not changing so this is where the equilibrium has been established but please remember that you can also have different type of graphs representing concentration hai na it is representing concentration so you can also have that a is representing like this sorry i need to achieve a constant value this is the a concentration and for b they are giving you like this so yeah this is also showing the achievement of equilibrium because you can see that the concentration of a has achieved a value and it is not changing concentration of b is also has achieved a value and it is not changing okay so please remember that all of these things can happen all of these things can happen you just have to see the concentration if here we have concentration then the concentration is changing it's sorry the concentration is changing and after a while it is it has achieved the constant value it has achieved a constant value okay so please tell me guys do you understand these graphs now Yes, sir. No, all of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, a list of characteristics of equilibrium, of chemical equilibrium, we have to write. equilibrium hai na because you have a this examination is what it is a subjective examination right chemical equilibrium okay now i need to stop sharing the screen because i am not going to write all these things i will just explain them so i will borrow the text yes so see i will just explain you a few things now you will answer me is the reaction happening while there is equilibrium or the reaction has stopped what do you guys think both the reactions forward backward they are happening or they have stopped when we have achieved the equilibrium no idea so they both are happening They both are happening, na? Because we are saying rate of forward is equal to rate of backward. Yes or no, guys? Tell me. Yes. What are we saying? So if rate of forward reaction is there, that means there is some forward reaction happening. If rate of backward reaction is there, that means there is some backward reaction also happening. So both the reactions are happening, but the, at the rate at which at which those are happening, that has become equal. But the reactions are happening. So we say that this is a dynamic equilibrium. means what does dynamic equilibrium equilibrium means that both the reactions are happening only the rates of those reactions are constant they have achieved a, a the both the sorry the rates are equal the rates are equal okay next is if i have achieved a equilibrium that means after a very we have achieved a prop we have achieved a state at which the properties of system is going to be unchanged they are not going to change after we have achieved the equilibrium and that is the definition of equilibrium itself that the properties they will not change and if the properties are changing that means you have not achieved equilibrium there is some change happening next is equilibrium can only be attained in a closed system now i need to explain this because see as i told you you have some reaction happening here and there is some gaseous molecule co2 that is produced and it is evaporating and it is sorry it is going out in the atmosphere it is going out in the atmosphere then obviously the co2 cannot be the co2 which is acting as a product 
it cannot react with the substance that is present here na so we need to have a closed system in order to achieve equilibrium because if we don't have a closed system in open system we will lose some material and if i am losing some material that means i am losing some products or i am losing some chemical species and that will hinder in the achievement of equilibrium that will disturb the equilibrium hai na that will disturb the equilibrium so this third point is clear with everyone yes or no it can be achieved only in a closed system yes sir yes now equilibrium can be achieved from any direction so they say that if i have a if this reaction is a reversible reaction and we have some equilibrium here it means that i can either start with a and i can achieve this reaction the state of equilibrium or i can also start with b and i can achieve the same thing here okay so it can be achieved from both three direction next is the word that is a catalyst does not alter the equilibrium point okay alter the equilibrium point i mean add here or the state of equilibrium acha have you heard the word catalyst uh, not in the context of chemistry but in general english have you heard this word catalyst yes sir yes sir acha what is the meaning in general english sir something which uh, speeds up the process okay so does it change the end product or is it just uh, speeds it up so it just speeds it up speeds it up hai na that is why a catalyst uh, this is clear right a catalyst is not going to change the state of equilibrium or the point of equilibrium now please remember the point of equilibrium are we interested here a point or are we interested in this b point in equilibrium tell me which point a or b a a yahi to bol rahe time se lena hi dena nahi hai why are you guys saying time yeah bola i knew you guys will have this notion of time time ka koi importance nahi hai time does not have any importance in equilibrium okay we are interested in which part b b and the catalyst is doing change in a yes or no yes yes sir yes sir so equilibrium is related to b point and the catalyst changing this point we are not interested in that at all and no? that is why it is not changing the state of equilibrium equilibrium depends on this rate so whatever so no? the rate of forward and the rate of backward reaction they are not going to change they are not going to change only the time in which the equilibrium has been achieved it will be changing and again equilibrium is not concerned with the time okay it is not concerned with the time you will get the whole chapter on time that is the chemical kinetics how fast a particular reaction happens but that is in 12th standard okay so a catalyst does not alter the equilibrium point or the state of equilibrium or the state of equilibrium okay now let us talk about the rate of forward and the rate of backward reaction i have a reaction in which a and b is forming c a and b is forming c so i think i can say that inside the vessel like how is this reaction happening until and unless a and b come together and they collide with each other until and unless the a molecule and the b molecule they collide with each other it is not going to form c yes or no yes or no a and b should come in contact na yes sir yes sir yes then only okay thing so i can say if i want to have a fast reaction okay if i want to have a fast reaction i can say that rate of reaction will be directly proportional to the chance of collision if there is more collision chance of collision yes or no agreed yes or no guys tell me yes so i can increase the chance of collision by increasing the number of moles if i have more moles of a and b then the chance of collision will be increasing yes or no yes sir okay now you tell me there is one more factor hai na there is one more factor i took here in this small box 100 moles and here i took in this large box also 100 moles so i took the same number of moles of a and b now what do you think where is the chance higher in a or b 
So A. Transfer from A, A. is higher. All of you agree, yes or no? Yes, sir. So I can see it is it is number of moles divided by volume. It is inversely proportional to volume now because if volume is small, the chance is greater. Correct? Yes. Any problem till here, guys? Mm -hmm -hmm. Are there any problem till here? No, 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 sir. No, sir. Okay. So also, number of moles by volume, it is what? It is the molar concentration. Correct? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So I can say for the reaction A plus B giving me C, I can say that rate of this reaction is directly proportional to the, okay, say, fine. This is the way of showing square brackets. It shows that it is molar concentration of A into the molar concentration of B. Yes or no? Any problem till here? No, Any sir. problem till here? No problem. Okay. So if I have this 2A giving me C, then most of you will say that, so the rate of reaction is going to be equal to concentration of A. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, no problem till here? No, sir. No, okay, fine. But let us see, okay, let us see. In reality, in the reality, 2A is to just a way of saving space now. Actually, this is the reaction, correct? Yes, sir. It is similar to this reaction, correct? Yes or no? Similar, no? Because there are two things which are colliding to form a C. Yes. So that means I have to write here also A. As we have written the concentration of A into B, I have to write concentration of A into the concentration of A. Because, because those molecules which are present in real life, they are just spheres. They don't know whether I'm colliding with A or B. They are, there are just two things which are colliding. So whether it is colliding with B or whether it is colliding with A, those molecules, they don't have that sense. So we have to treat them as two different entities. And I will write for a reaction in which we have 2A giving me C, 2A giving me C, the rate is directly proportional to the concentration of A into the concentration of A. That means the rate is directly proportional to the concentration of A square. Tell me, any problem till here? No, sir. All of you agree with this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All of you agree with this? That means if I have a reaction like this, 2A plus 3B giving me C, that means I will write the rate as the concentration of A square into the concentration of B cube. Any problem? Yes. Any problem, right? No problem. So this is what is known as the law of mass action. This is known as the law of mass action. When I will give you the PDF, then you will have the same thing. Okay. So you will have a statement and all. What is the law of mass action? But I okay, wait a second. I need to actually just copy and paste that thing. If I can open a new window. I cannot. Uh, I can open a new window. Okay. Now in that, I can open something that is from the previous. Yeah. Okay. So this is the law of mass action. Anna, the same thing we have stated here. We have wrote a generalized reaction AA plus DD giving CC plus DD. The rate is directly proportional to the concentration of A to the power A, B to the power B. And if I am going to remove this proportionality sign, I will have to put a constant that is K. Okay. 
and this is the statement of law of mass action. Okay, but since we have understood this, I don't need to explain it once more. You under understood this, right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Anna? Okay, fine. Now we are going to move, and now I will. We will understand the rate of forward reaction. Ho gaya, backward reaction. Ho gaya. Same thing will be for backward. But now we will understand the law of chemical equilibrium. Law of chemical equilibrium. Equilibrium. Then this will have A A, a general reaction in which. A is the stoichiometry, okay. Lowercase a is the stoichiometry, lowercase b also is the stoichiometry. C C. Plus D D. So we have two reactions here. A rate of forward reaction. We have two reactions, forward reaction and backward reaction. So forward reaction, which is A A plus B B, giving me C C plus D D. So for this, the rate will be equal to. I will write this rate and give a subscript of A, which will be equal to the rate constant. There will be the some rate constant K of forward to the concentration of A. To the power a into the concentration of b to the power of d. Next, we have the backward reaction. Backward reaction. In backward reaction, we have C C plus D D giving me A A plus B B A A plus B B. Now, in this case, what is happening? The rate we can write as Rate of backward reaction, it is equal to K B into the concentration of C to the power C and the concentration of D to the power D. Okay, any problem till here, guys? No, sir. Any problem till here? No, no. Okay. So moving on. So at equilibrium, we say that what happens at equilibrium? The rate of forward reaction it is equal to the this is equal to the rate of backward reaction, and the rate of forward reaction is K F into the concentration of A to the power A and the concentration of B to the power B, which will be equal to K B into the concentration of C to the power C and D to the power D. Now I will just have K F upon K B, that is the rate of the rate constant of forward reaction divided by the rate constant of backward reaction, and if I divide these two things, then I will get the concentration of C to the power C, concentration of D to the power D, divided by the concentration of A to the power A, to the concentration of B to the power B. So now these two things are constant. So I will make a bigger constant, and that we see as the equilibrium constant, K, okay, which will be equal to. The concentration of C to the power C, the concentration of D to the power D, by the concentration of A to the power A to the concentration of B to the power B. So this is the K that is known as the equilibrium constant. This K, our this is our K which is known as the equilibrium constant. Okay, and these are the concentration. Here we have the. This is the concentration of the C and D. Okay, the C and D. These are the concentration of products raised to stoichiometric. Coefficient and this is your concentration of reactants
raised to stoichiometric coefficient. Yes or no, guys, tell me. You understood this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, again. So we'll just write this point that I have just explained. No, I'll explain the same point here. So the ratio of the product and concentration, uh, the ratio of product of concentration term, right? product of the concentration term of product of reaction raised to their coefficient to the product of concentration of reactants of the reaction raised to their coefficient is uh, is constant at, at equilibrium. Right? So that is constant at equilibrium and it is known as the equilibrium constant. This concentration, this constant is known as equilibrium constant. Okay. So the th same thing that we have written here, concentration of product raised to stoichiometric coefficient divided by the concentration of reactant divided to their stoichiometric coefficient stoichiometric coefficient okay now we have represented this in terms of concentration it can also be represented in terms of pressure so write the next point equilibrium constant can be represented In terms of molar concentration and for reactions involving only gases it can be represented in terms of pressure in terms of pressure so if i talk about my molar concentration if i talk about molar concentration then it is represented as kc which is equal to the product of the concentration of products raised to the power raised to the stoichiometric coefficient divided by the product of the concentration of reactant raised to the power stoichiometric coefficient. What is this pi? What is this pi? Nipada. Okay. Pi represents multiplication as sigma represents Summation. Now you understood this? Yes or no? Hagya, what is pi? Yes, sir. Hana? At ye 22 by 7 matlik dijega, please, KC me hana? Ito humbad nam ho jayenge. Hana ki ye 22 by 7 kya padhara? Ike pi is, what is pi? It is represents multiplication. So if you have A plus B, then giving you C plus D. So A concentration in the yaha pi aega, B concentration in yaha pi aega, raised to their stoichiometric coefficient and all. Okay. Okay, so if I want to represent in terms of pressure, so in terms of pressure, I will say that this is Kp, which will be equal to the product of the pressure of products raised to the stoichiometric coefficient divided by the product of the pressure of reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, raised to the stoichiometric coefficient. So Kp it is only used, and again I'm writing note. Kp can be used only for those only for reactions involving uh, 
gases reactions involving gases and i'm giving you guys some questions write that down write the expression for equilibrium constant write the expression for equilibrium constant as kc for all reactions and as kp wherever applicable so for all of them you have to write kc no matter what but you will write the kp also if you have only gases atom okay if you have only gases so i'm the first one i'm doing for you so in this reaction we have four moles of ns3 which is a gas plus 5 moles of o2 which is also a gas now uh, this is an equilibrium with 4 moles of no 4 moles of no which is a gas plus 6 moles of h2o in gases form so for this i will write kc okay so who will help me what is the product product upon reactant hai na kc is what product upon reactant so tell me product concentration of no raised to the power 4 4 into what is the other, what is another product h2o h2o raised to the power 6 Six. In the reactant, what do we have? Concentration NH3. of NH3 raised to, raised to the power four, and O two raised to the power five. Five. If I want to write the Kp, so Kp के लिए कैसे लिखेंगे? We will write the pressure of. So pressure is represented by P of NO raised to the power four. Then similarly, P of H two O. Is to the power six. P of ammonia, N is three. Raised to the power four, and the pressure of O two raised to the power five. Okay, so I'm giving you simple ones. Please write B. If you have N two gas, the three moles of H two gas. This is an equilibrium equilibrium with two moles of N is three gas. And see, you have two moles of NO two gas, which is in equilibrium with N two O four. Yes, please write this down. Let's make it done. So, for all of them, you can write KC and KP also, right? हाँ यू सर यू डोंट नीड टू सेंड इन चैट इट विल टेक सो मच टाइम है ना आप अपनी कॉपी में कर लीजिए ओके एंड इफ यू वांट टू सेंड द आंसर जस्ट क्लिक अ फोटो एंड सेंड इट टू निष्कर्ष सर आई विल गेट द आंसर
Thank you. Then all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Enough to tell you. What will be the casing for this B1? Concentration of? NH3. NH3 to the power? 2. 2. Two. Divided by the concentration of? N2. N2 to the power? 1. Ah, one. The time will again. H2 to the power? 3. 3. KP will be? P in NH3. Uh, pressure of NH3. Whole square. That will be the pressure of N2. The power 1. Pressure of H2. Whole cube. For this KC, the concentration of N2O4 divided by the concentration of NO2 square. KP will be pressure of N2O4 divided by the pressure of NO2 whole square, NO2 whole square, okay. Now, we will look at the, okay, so somebody sent me, oh, this is a memo now, okay. This is one one, what is that one one? Memo now, one one. Yes, sir, that actually, that is uh, like NH3 to the power two into one, that. Why one? Yes, sir. Why you have multiplied by one? But sir, it doesn't matter now because if if it if it uh -huh. is I, I multiplied know, by know. one, so I know it doesn't matter. But I'm asking why? Why bother multiplying by one? Okay, I won't do it from next time. I don't know. Oh, ha, ha, please don't, don't do it in examination huh? because the teacher wants to uh, represent it in this way. But is there any reason why you multiply? No, there isn't any reason. Okay. okay. Now we look at the relationship between KC and KP. Relationship between KC and KP. KC and KP. Okay, so just memo na hamiye is se bolte like in calculation it will it will not have any effect. But if uh, your teacher is asking to represent it in some way, then आपसे अगर कोई नाम पूछेगा तो आप memo na into one नहीं बोलिएगा, है ना? बोलते memo na only, right? Even though it doesn't yes. make any difference. So we are representing KC as that only. Na? Okay. So in calculation you can do those things. So if we have relationship between KC and KP. So basically it is a relationship between the concentration and pressure. Yes or no? Because KC in that we are representing the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration and in KP we are representing in terms of pressure. So we have the concentration of, uh, we have the relationship of concentration and pressure. So whenever you have pressure, you should remember the equation that is PV is equal to NRT. PV is equal to NRT. Now what is pressure? Pressure will be equal to N upon V times R times T. Now what is N upon V? N upon V is the molar concentration, number of moles divided by volume. So you can see, I can write this as P is equal to CRT, where C is the concentration. C is the concentration. So if I talk about the pressure of A, then I'm talking about the concentration of A times R times T, or I can also write this as the concentration of A times R times T. Okay, so if I'm talking about the, constant, the pressure of A, the pressure of A. Now I will write the KP. So all of these things I'm writing for the reactions AA plus BB is in equilibrium with CC plus DD. Okay. Now, so for this, I will write KP it is equal to the pressure of C to the power C, the pressure of D to the power D, pressure of A to the power A, and the pressure of B to the power B. So now I can all write all of these terms 
in the form of I can write all of these terms as the pressure of C, it is be equal to the concentration of C R T to the power C. Anna? And for D, I can write the concentration of D times R times T to the power D. Yes or no? Agreed? All of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A R T to the power A and B R T to the power B. I can separate these terms. I can write the concentration of C. So the concentration of C to the power C, concentration of D to the power D, divided by the concentration of A to the power A and the concentration of B to the power B. And I can see that RT and RT are there. So I can write RT to the power. The bases are same. So I can add the powers. Right? RT to the power C plus D because they are in multiplication. Here I will write RT to the power A plus B. RT to the power A plus B. And I can write here, this is as concentration of, okay, fine. Now this will be KC. Yetna part KC ho jayega. Yes or no guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. KC. Yes, sir. KC and RT to the power of C plus D minus A plus B, correct? Yes, sir, no? Yes, sir. And I can also yes, write sir. delta number of moles of gas will be equal to number of moles of gas of product. That means we have C moles and D moles of product minus a plus B moles of reactant. Anna? We have A and B moles of reactant, C and B moles of product. So this is uh, C plus D minus A plus B is what? Delta NG. So I can write KP is equal to KC times RT delta N. And please remember for gases only. Only for gases, delta NG. What is NG? Delta NG is the difference of moles of gas in products and reactant. Delta Ng is equal to number of moles of gas in product minus number of moles of gas in reactant, not the other way around. Okay. So this reaction is there. Delta Ng, I will write. We can have three, right, three types, right? Delta Ng can be zero or it can be greater than zero or it can be less than zero. It can be positive, negative or zero. Now, if delta Ng, if delta Ng is greater than zero. And if delta Ng is less than zero, or let us say delta Ng is equal in this case, each me. And if you have delta Ng, which is less than zero here, greater than zero, equal to zero, and here we have less than zero. No. If delta Ng, what is the equation we have? Kp is equal to Kc times Rt delta Ng. So if delta Ng is greater than zero, then Rt will be what? Rt will be a Rt will be more than one. No, no, Rt will be more, more than one. Because if, if it is two, R is also positive, T is also positive, and it raised to the power two, then it is going to be positive. So Kp will be. So I will say that product has and this product will have product has more moles of gas and that is my Kp will be greater than Kc. Now in this case number of moles is equal if delta mg is equal to zero rt will be equal to one and kc will be equal to k number of moles is equal in product and reactant 
and that is why KP and KC they will be equal. And in the last case, product has less moles of gas. Now, if if anything, if let us say ten to the power minus one, so this is equal to one upon ten, and this will be equal to this will be less than one. If something multiplied by less than one, it will give you lesser number. So in this case, the KP it will be smaller than KC. KP will be smaller than KC. Okay, this is important. And this page only, I am going to give you a question. I'm going to give you a question. I know. So you can write this question. For which of the re reactions Kp is less than Kc? Yes, ma'am, I'm correct. I'm waiting for others. You can send the answer in chat, na? A, B, C, D. What happened to this? Yusra, Hazan, Khalil. Okay, Hazan, correct. Sayyid Muhammad, many people are here. Mazia, Minashi, Mehreen, Yusra, Abdurrahman. Yes, Khalil, correct. Acha answer up there is up there. Okay. It's a trying at least. Let me know if you are having difficulty. Yusra? Okay, Minaki is giving the answer. Yusra, you are doing still or you are having difficulty? Please let me know if you are having difficulty, guys. Okay.
Okay, Minashi, can you turn the mic on? Yes, sir. Okay. So in this, how did you answer? Can you please explain? How did you approach the question? Do it, say, like that. Hey, like that. And then you both I'm giving you one more chance. Like rephrase whatever you said. What did you do in this question? How did you approach the question? What was the first thing that you did? Stoichiometry check and then... Stoichiometry of reactants and products, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you tell me. How many moles of a reactant is there in this case in A? You want to check N delta N, no? you want to check delta N, which will be equal to N P minus N R. Product minus reactant. But I, how many moles of gases in product? Two. Two, no? And in reactant? One. Uh -huh. Stoichiometry, what is the reactant here, Minashi? Reactant, uh, two HI. Okay. Uh, we have two, no? Two, two moles two. of HI, no? Yes. Now try again. Try again. So in the first case, KP is equal to KC. What one more answer? Yes, Abdurrahman, correct. Yeah, yeah Mary, nice. Saw your answer. That is correct. I'm waiting for others. Yusra, you have not given. Sayyid Muhammad, you have not given. Minashi, I think you need to change the answer. Mazia, you have not given the answer. You should turn the mic on. Yes, you should. You should turn the mic on. So time khatam ho raha hai, you should. Please turn the mic on. Nee. Okay. Yes, tell me. What is the number of moles of product, Yusra? Two, sir. Two. And reactant? A reactant is? Two. Reactant with two, one, right? Why are okay, you saying Yes, two? sir. Yeah, so we can't see it. What is it? What is it? Delta N is? One that means delta n is greater than zero. In this case, Kp is greater than Kc. Answer B hoga. Aap log pata nahi, itna time kyun laga rahe? Okay. Last point is what is the we are going to take R na? We have here Kp is equal to Kc RT to the power delta ng. So that you have to write a note in. Kp is equal to this relationship Kc into Rt times delta Ng. Rt times delta Ng. 
the value of beta theta. R is equal to R will be equal to zero point zero eight two one liter APM per Kelvin per mole if pressure is given in APM. And R will be equal to zero point zero eight three one. Zero point zero eight three one liter ATM per Kelvin per mole if pressure is given in bar. Okay. So this is it for this lecture. You have one hour break. After that, we'll meet once again. Okay. So when I'm going to meet you in the next uh, partner, I will give you the PDF at that time. Will that be fine, everyone? All of you are going to come now. All of yes. you will be attending, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Is there anyone who is not attending? Then I will send.